Thank you for the wonderful uh, introduction. I'm very uh, happy to be here. We've seen fantastic buildings uh, this afternoon. Now we're going on a smaller scale. So I'm going to speak about exhibition design. And I really like Ines how you sp said that it was an everyday uh, life uh, is a scenery somehow because I'm also working as a ex uh, product designer. So I try to bring the spirit of a product design into furniture design. But first, uh, sorry, exhibition design. But first, um, I entitled this presentation Le Socle est mort. It's um, a little bit to express what I think about the exhibition design. Uh, we know this case from very long time, which is a marble plinth. And it has been for years like this. Okay, it uh, elevates the, the, the works of art. It creates a distance a little bit. But I think also it creates a statue of the work of art. And that's what happens uh, very often. And the little improvement from that has been this, which is basically exactly the same, but paint in white. So I know you are all uh, museum experts here, so you know that is not um, efficient enough today, this kind of situation, the simple box. But it's still uh, amazing to see so many museums they have uh, on the cave, uh, full of box of white with different sizes and everything, and they don't know what to do uh, with them. So I think this is a dead situation, and this is what we would like to do now, is finding a way which uh, express and is not, or present the work of art without a single box. But of course, that brings many other questions. And this is a little bit uh, what I'm going to share with you now. It's all these questions. Because exhibition design now is not a f only a physical thing, only how you build things, but it's also how you can give a message to something. First, uh, I'd like to speak about the, the how change, how people change their way to visit museum. Um, I was educated like this a little bit. Sunday you go to the church, Sunday you go to the museum. So you go um, in a very uh, religious place, uh, spiritual place. I speak of both museum. And that's why many of the um, uh, city has the first Sunday of uh, the month free entry. And what is funny is that we can see that uh, the relation between the visitors and the museum changed a lot. And now some cities bring it to a Saturday free, which I think it's a huge move. <laughs> because on Saturday, you can go to the museum, you can go to the football, you can go to the shopping mall or, or to the cinema. And I think even in New Delhi, the new uh, mall, shopping mall, is close to a contemporary museum. So. It's a little bit how um, things ha has changed. Um, for me, museum is also a, s a place where you are really quiet and you don't use cell phones, um, which is so much important now to have a quiet place to r relax, to think, and to uh, observe th the, the surroundings. And I try to find other places uh, where you can you don't have cell phones. Of course, there is a Swiss trains, but I didn't put it there. But you have the hospital, the church, and the museum. <coughs> and I will say that the three of this typology is places where you can heal. You can heal the body, you can heal the spirituality, and you can heal um, the mind with the museum. So I think museum can heal us. Um, therefore, I try to do a... Um, small comparison between, uh, you will see, curator, hospital, and museum. So first, um, in, Fran in French, we say commissaire. Actually, there is not, uh, it's not the same than curator. Commissaire is uh, like a detective, is looking for things, and curator is actually also would come to cure. That's why I like the idea that a uh, museum can cure people through the helps of curators. And then I do a little um, comparison between the medicine and uh, my work, exhibition design. So you have the traditional way to do it. Um, basically, you take pills. It's chemical, very efficient, quick, 
but very artificial. And so what do you do? You put a work of art. It's straightforward. This is what happens very often in the commercial fair, like um, the Salon de Genève, like autom automotive car show, where basically you built um, a nice plinth and you put a lot of lights into it. What I try to do is more another way, more natural, let's say, uh, healing system. Is you take the work of art, basically you you try to find the um, roots and the source of, of the work. So this is exactly my work. I try to understand with the curator, the museum, all what is about uh, the exhibition. And then I try to find one single uh, drop of the flavor of the exhibition, and then I try to put it in, in, in space, and I try to translate that. And it's more slow than the chemical one, but it's more in depth and maybe it brings more meaning. So I would say I try always to find one message clear and using this famous motto, less is more. What is also very funny is that in the furniture design, for example, this is really known and accepted by everyone. Less is more, we understand. In um, exhibition design, it's not so clear. Uh, it's not so clear that less is, is is more. For example, uh, same between France, French, and English. Scenography, exhibit designer. I prefer saying that we do exhibition design rather than scenography because for me, scenography is a little bit like if you do a scene, so you construct like in, like in the classic theater way, you build a nice uh, decorative things around a piece of art and we don't try to do that. We try to do something very simple, but can give a message to, um, and can follow the message of the curator. So we literally do design rather than scenography, let's say. Uh, I will go now quickly through some example of uh, exhibition design work, um, where I will try to explain every time to um, the single message I try to find for, uh, for this. For example, this is a museum in uh, Saint-Etienne, uh, the, the exhibition was about design and politics and fiction. Uh, the curator, she wanted to first have a movie and to present an exhibition uh, as a movie. So it's very simple. We design a, a way to uh, show the pieces like a movie. So you have a big turning uh, platforms and you can sit and the exhibition turns in front of you. It's like a um, lazy exhibition for lazy visitors. And that was very clear from the beginning. Of course, after there is a lot of layers of needs uh, when you do exhibition design, but to finding the, the, the essence is, is really the most important. Another example is for uh, ECAL, the school where, where I teach exhibit design, and um, they wanted to produce a photographic exhibition that you can travel with. Basically, uh, we said they wanted to show the quantities of photo that are produced at ECAL. So we simply uh, used what you have when you print photo is the plotter, and then you have cardboards that's wrapped around the, the plotter. So we did an exhibition about big plotter with something like a waterfall th of uh, pictures in the end, and all the construction uh, was the cardboard, which is also the essence of the, the plotter. So you can see it's here from uh, far away. Another uh, example is uh, in Grand Ornu in Belgium. Uh, it was an exhibition about uh, ceramics from Sèvres and, um, uh, and this 10 years of um, works of ceramics. And one common things between uh, this museum and Sèvres is uh, the fire, because uh, it's an old um, uh, industry where th they had kiln and uh, at Sèvres also to produce ceramics. So we work specially with the lights to express somehow this idea of fire. So all the show, all our work were about having a light and somehow give materiality to this light. So this is, for example, um, a table with a piece of ceramics and we create this soft box uh, 
area to, to show the, the pieces. These were in a huge uh, hall where we create this kind of uh, ceiling which create lights as well to show the ceramics. You can imagine that you have a 10 meter ceiling and 20 centimeter ceramics, so you had to find the right balance between uh, each other. So you can see it from here. This is another um, uh, part of the exhibition, uh, also with lights, but here with much more um, strong lights with a strong shadow. Another one with Ekal, it was um, about graphic design. <coughs> so as you know, one of the way to, when you do graphic design, you have a grid somehow. So we develop a, um, a 3D grid that they could use as a itinerary uh, exhibition system. And you have all these dots, which uh, these small holes, where you can plug different kind of uh, pieces and uh, objects. So these are the pictures from the book. What was really interesting here is that we produced the exhibition before the book, then we photograph it for the book, and then together, when the show was open, there was the book and the exhibition. So it was really um, a good uh, talk. And what is also quite funny is it was supposed to be uh, an exhibition to present the book, and finally we had a good success with the, with the exhibition, and it turns out almost that it was a som somehow like a catalog for the exhibition. And then we produced three different sets to made it, uh, because there was too much show ongoing at the same time, so there was three, three sets that were traveled around. And this is one of the view uh, on one side. All the work has been uh, classified by colors, and of course there is more black and white works. So this is the other side. Another example is um, an exhibition about uh, Panorama, which were here in MAH, uh, which traveled also to Museum. Again, it seems very simple, but uh, it's about the paintings, Panorama. So what we decide to do is somehow to create a panorama in the museum, to transform the museum as a panorama. So we use three codes that you find when you look at a, at a panorama. You have the blue, the sky, so we paint a fade of blue uh, on the wall. You have a, um, something like a um, garde corps, a barrier, a railway, rail hands, where you can um, f prevent to fall. But here it was prevent the works and also acting as a as a place where we could write the cartel. So this is the view of um, uh, the exhibition in Geneva. We had also in the center uh, uh, like something like a table d'orientation where you can look at the, the works and the, the all the information was were in the center. And this is another view uh, at uh, the museum. Yes, and maybe the last uh, exhibition, it's about Eames and uh, Hollywood. Uh, the designers, Charles and Ray Eames, they used to take a lot of pictures of um, uh, photograph pictures, and especially in Hollywood about uh, Billy Wilder's um, setup of movie setup. And it was exhi exhibited uh, here in uh, close to a uh, uh, Adam, close to the Atomium, there is a new museum called Adam. And the goal was to uh, present some uh, pictures, but also in a huge spaces. And what we tried to do again, to have a very simple uh, system to put lights, to see the photographic pictures, like you can see here. So there was lights, there was behind the pictures, a little bit like because there was the original one was a diapositive, so it gives the feelings when you look at the diapositive around the the, um, the lights. And again, in the center, we didn't hide the system; we just simply uh, let it as it uh, as it was constructed. And thanks for the topics. He was also uh, explaining a little bit um, the pictures itself, which were also about. Um, creating a uh, Hollywood uh, decor somehow. 
and maybe this is the last one because we can speak about architecture. This was the first exhibition design work and it was about pieces of ceramics from uh, Ettore Sotsas. And it's again very simple. Uh, when Sotsas designed these pieces, it's for him like small buildings. Um, and when you look at buildings, you look at them from underneath. You have another perspective. So what we did here, were instead of uh, having a, a height of 90 centimeters, we had a height of the table of uh, 110 centimeters. Then you will be able to look at the ceramics from underneath from the same perspective as you would uh, look at the uh, buildings. And in the center, you had the hole where you can put your head and uh, really get inside the, the ceramic. Okay, so I think I'll um, pass the, the time now. Thank you.